Asbury. <laughs> The legendary Bob Marley, famous throughout the world. But back in 1972, Marley was a struggling musician living in London. Outside of Jamaica, hardly anyone knew who he was, and getting airplay was tough. So one day he tried an unusual tactic. It all started when he met art teacher Keith Boff. I was in a nightclub in Carnaby Street and I got talking to Johnny Nash and Bob Marley. Johnny had recorded a symbol called Stir It Up. It was a song that Bob had written and they were both obviously frustrated that the symbol was not hitting the top 40. And I suggested, why don't you guys come down to the school in Peckham where I teach and do a performance for the kids and you'll get them easily to buy your record. Did you really think they would show up? Not at all. But surprisingly, they did, and today Keith's back at his old school, now the Damilola Taylor Community Centre. As we approached the doors, Johnny, Bob and myself, we were, entered the, the games hall and there was tumultuous clapping and cheering. I am so jealous. <laughs> I'm a total Marley fan. I had my camera with me. It's the kind of story that if I hadn't, no one would believe the story. But I've got some great pictures uh, to show you, Carrie. Here's... Uh, Oh my goodness, <laughs> that is fantastic. Johnny was sitting on the left and Bob wearing the beanie hat is here on the, on the right of the picture. Look at the kids' faces, they just can't believe it, can they? And in fact, there's not even, there's not even microphones. I mean, exactly. They really were properly acoustic. Exactly, and one of the kids cheekily asked uh, Bob why he was wearing that hat indoors. And he took the hat off and his baby dreadlocks sprung out and he smiled at them you know he was quite happy to discuss this yeah. and he said uh, this is part of my religion proper education it for the was kids. a proper education a lot better than double maths right exactly <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long long time one of the songs played that day was Stir It Up. We've invited Marley fans Desta Zion and John Blood to recreate the performance on the same spot. And now you are here, I say it's so clear. And we've traced two old boys who were at the gig, Terry Curzon and George Dyer. George, how are you? OK. <laughs> Seems like yesterday. Yeah. But it was yeah. a yeah, it was a great gig. Yeah. And they told people, but I don't think they really believed me. You know, sort of like, yeah, Bob Marley come to your school. No, nah, you know. But you did, and that was it was it was fantastic for them to do that. Elated in a word. There was a point when we were in the playground and Bob was coming towards me and our, and our, our eyes met as if to say Menor, Menor, which means I know. It's a it kind of deep thing, you know. There was a, something special on that day. I won't never forget that day. No. After the performance on the way back to the car, he saw a group, group of students playing football and started showing them some of the skills that they had with football. Oh, look at this. Um, I watched him keep the ball in the air with his foot, with his knee, <laughs> and his guitar. Look at the kids as well, they're their faces. The ball eventually went over to Johnny Nash, the Texan, and he kicked the ball as hard so as he hard. could, <laughs> and it disappeared over the terraced houses. You must have been the coolest teacher out there. <laughs> For two weeks, I was a bit of a folk hero, yeah. Whether the school gig helped or not, Stir It Up reached number 13 in the charts, Marley's first success outside of Jamaica. So stir it up. Within three years, Bob Marley would become a megastar, and although he sadly missed today, his voice still echoes throughout the world, including here in Peckham. Brilliant. It was just like being back here in 1972.